Now, the fourth annual Star Tides field demonstration displaying the latest disaster relief technology was recently held here in Washington. VOA's Carolyn Turner has that story. After a natural disaster or civil disruption, the average stay in a refugee camp is seven years, according to the National Defense University. Researchers there are using military techniques to support disaster relief for civilians. Star Tides staged a demonstration of high-tech emergency equipment. The equipment is designed to be easily transported through airports. Director of Technology at National Defense University, Linton Wells, says his goal is to make information available to decision makers and field workers. What I'm doing now is coordinating a research project called TIDES, which is about sustainable support to populations under stress, post-disaster, post-war, impoverished. TIDES is a knowledge-sharing research project. So we're not into buying things or picking winners and losers. We're about sharing information that people in the field can use. So we're looking at shelter and water and power. We're going to be looking at integrated combustion and solar cooking, uh, heating and cooling, lighting, sanitation, and lots of information and communications technologies. Even when emergency food is provided, refugees frequently lack access to cooking fuels. Solar Cookers International provides solar cooking tools and training in Kenya, Ethiopia, and Chad. The food cooks with free, clean energy, according to the group's Patricia McArdle. But the purpose of this exhibit is to show decision makers, uh, people who come to see this from different branches of government, that solar cooking is a viable technology and to make them aware of the different types of solar cooking technology that are currently available. The cookets are made of cardboard and foil. They fold up into a little 12 inch by 12 inch square and they're being made by the women in the camp of cardboard and donated foil. Each family in the three camps that are where it's taking place, uh, Tulome, Iridimi and uh, Orcasoni, each family has two or three cookets. Another group called Life Giving Force provides water purification. Partner Jameson Slough says a portable filtration system can provide clean water for 5,000 people per day. We feel like we saved a number of lives in the tens of thousands uh, with our initial reaction. And the nice thing about this system is it's very light, about 100 pounds to 115 pounds. Um, it can work off any real power requirements, so AC, DC, or solar power. Um, and also can tap into existing grids and water infrastructures and uh, provide clean, drinkable, potable water to um, you know, thousands of people just by one simple little unit. A shelter was on display at Star Tides that could be assembled rapidly under poor conditions. Linton Wells explains. The building behind me is called a hexa yurt, hexagonal yurt. And it's made up of boards that are, in this case, eight feet wide by four feet high. Uh, in metric, it's also twice as wide as it is high. Because of that geometry, if you cut them in the diagonal, the triangles thus formed will lock in a roof that, that forms a hexagon. So you can assemble this in the field with nothing more than a knife, uh, tape, and tie downs. Linton Wells is developing an emergency knowledge base for people to use on the Star Tides website. The website contains emergency disaster and relief information for academics, NGOs, governments, and international agencies. Carolyn Turner, VOA News.